The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 43 through 47. Irene Robbins was short, with wild curly hair. She found her favorite outfits at the thrift store. Isn't this the coolest pair of boots? Alta Gibson was tall, with long, sleek hair, a fashion model's wardrobe, and a sharp tongue. Her circle of friends hung on her every word. There is no way Irene Robbins got a 99 on the pre-algebra test. She must have cheated. <sighs> Alta's cutting comment made its way back to Irene, who glowered at her small group leader at church. Alta is totally a mean girl. Lynn nodded thoughtfully. Maybe, but if she's mean, it's probably because she's hurting somehow. Her mom's in fashion merchandising. Alta gets everything she wants. School wasn't the only place Irene had to deal with Alta. They were also on the same team in the soccer league. Come on, Robinson, you're pulling us down. Yeah, well, my parents don't pay for private lessons. Hey, she just tripped me. And it was just as bad at Adventure Girls, where they were in the same troop. Oh, good grief, Robbins. Those ridiculous boots are falling apart. <sighs> Irene wanted to snap back, but their troop master, Mrs. Crane, was busy assigning partners to sell Adventure Girls chocolate bars together. The team with the highest sales will get the summer hiking trip in the Rockies paid for. Irene perked up. She hadn't thought her family could afford the trip. If I can sell enough chocolate, <sighs> Alta, seated at the next table, rolled her eyes. Selling stuff is lame. My mom can, like, just pay for the trip. I've paired everyone up. Let's see, Irene Robbins and Alta Gibson. <sighs> Irene felt her stomach sink. But after the troop meeting was over, she forced herself to stand up and walk over to Alta and her friends. So my mom is, like, in Paris right now, and Alta? Alta raised both eyebrows and blinked at Irene. What? So, I was thinking, maybe we could get permission to sell chocolate outside the Main Street Market on Saturday. Fine, whatever. Irene worked really hard to get ready for Saturday. She talked to the store manager, found a table they could borrow, and even got her small group leader to sit with him for a few hours. I love how you decorated with all these flags. They're flags of the countries where the chocolate is sourced from. Would you like to support Adventure Girls? I've got a card reader. Where's Alta? She texted she'd be here. I'll just check again. But Alta didn't respond, and even worse, she never showed up. I cannot believe her. I'm doing all the work, and she, ugh. I just want to rub her smug face in the dirt on the soccer field. Look, I get it. The way Alta treats you is the worst. It is so wrong. But you know that giving her back the same doesn't help. Yeah, I know. The Jesus way is hard. Love your enemies and pray for those who hurt you. I'm not sure he was talking about Alta. I totally hear you, but let's figure out what you actually can say to her. Monday morning before their pre-algebra test, Irene tried to confront Alta in the hallway. It was really disappointing when you didn't show up. Did something happen? Yeah, I have a life. Alta stalked away and didn't show up for class until right at the moment the bell rang, just as Mr. Wyatt entered the room. Irene sighed as their teacher dropped the test on her desk. At least numbers make sense. The next morning, everybody expected to see their grades, but Mr. Wyatt didn't hand back the tests. After class, he called Alta up to his desk. Gibson, can I see you for a minute? Alta frowned and made her way up. Irene in the front row was fixing a zipper on her backpack and couldn't help overhearing as Mr. Wyatt held up a test paper. Your test, Miss Gibson. Irene saw Alta light up. 97? You scored 69 on the last test. Uh, yeah, and my mom got really mad. I mean, I, I studied really, really hard this time, I, all weekend. Well, I'm glad to hear it. 
But the test key went missing from my desk yesterday before class, and no one else had such a dramatic improvement. Are you saying? Did you take the test key, Miss Gibson? No. I think I should set up a conference with your parents. Irene saw Alta's face go pale. N no, I don't call my mom, please. I just want to talk about it. Uh, but, but she won't listen. She doesn't think I'm good at any... She'll just hear cheating and get so angry. Irene's mind raced. She knew Alta wasn't in the classroom to take the test key, but it was tempting to let her flounder. Please don't call. Irene took a deep breath and stepped forward. Mr. Wyatt, Alta didn't take the test key. What? I talked to her in the hall before class, and then she didn't come into the room until right before you did. Alta gaped in surprise. Thank you, Miss Robbins. He turned back to Alta. If you prefer, I will not contact your parents. Just let me see the same kind of work on the next test, all right? <sighs> Alta hurried out of the room with just a brief glance toward Irene. But all that week, Irene didn't hear a single mean thing from Alta. And the following Saturday, Alta even showed up to help at the Main Street Market. Irene knew that she and Alta would never be BFFs, but she was glad she had made the choice to show love to her enemy. Thank you.